Hey YouTube, this is my dog training tip of the day for today. It's regarding counter conditioning or changing your dog's emotional response to a certain stimuli or trigger. A lot of people who are using counter conditioning are finding that they're getting no results. And when you're getting no results, you can tell yourself that you're not doing it correctly. Some of the reasons why when using classical or counter conditioning you're not getting any results is one, the main reason, number one, is that the dog is not finding the trigger a predictor of the reinforcement. So if your dog is not finding the trigger a predictor of the reinforcement, you're wasting your time and you're just basically reinforcing your dog for nothing. You really want to make sure that the trigger is the predictor of the treat. Here's an example of someone who is me screwing up big time. My Border Collie Splash used to be very reactive to human beings and dogs after being attacked as a puppy and she made great progress in all environments except when we were walking in the canyon which is, there's brush, there's bushes this high so she can't see over them and a long path and as we'd be walking along another human being would be walking up the path and I would see the human being, get my treats ready, and as she saw the human being, I would feed her. And I wondered why she was not getting better in this environment until I finally realized that even though I got the treat out way before she saw the person, she still saw the predictor that the food was coming was me getting the treat out of the bag and she was waiting till I gave her the treat. So the person walking up the path was not predicting my reinforcement that I was giving her. Even if I clicked her for looking and feeding her, that first signal that the treat was going to come to her, the predictor of the food, was when I got the food out of my bait bag. So, to solve this problem, I simply kept food in my hand on walks in the canyon, and then, when the person appeared, I would feed her for looking at the person, and suddenly, there was a huge change in the training. She started to get more comfortable with people passing in the canyon where before there was absolutely no change no matter how much training I did. And I basically wasted like eight months of doing absolutely no classical or counter conditioning because um, I was basically training her to like treats. Everybody can screw up so the sign that you're screwing up is when you're seeing no change whatsoever. A huge clue that you're not using counter conditioning is if you're talking about your dog being focused on the food or distracted by the food. If you're, if you're working with your dog on trying to change their emotional response to something in the environment and your dog is busy staring at you and being over aroused about the treats that you're holding, you're not going to do any classical conditioning or counter conditioning. Your dog is going to be only, if you're feeding your dog at that point in time, you're actually building your dog's arousal on treats and not creating a, a relationship between the trigger and the, the reinforcement. So what you need to do instead is backtrack and start with games of teaching your dog to stop focusing on the food. To do this, you simply sit on the couch and wait for your dog to stop thinking about the food while you're holding some food in your hand. And here you can see Splash is thinking about the food. She's going, she's smelling the food, even if she's not looking at me because she knows the game of ignore the food during training, she's still thinking about the food. So that moment that she's not thinking about the food, I'm going to reinforce her. And you'll see that in a second because I'm going to wait quite a long time for her to be absolutely not thinking about the food when I reinforce her. Once you start playing games like this, you play the game where the dog's settling and not thinking about the food, try in different rooms of the house, then try on a walk. If your dog's trotting next to you and they're looking up at you, they're thinking about the food. So the moment your dog is distracted by maybe a blowing leaf, that's the moment you're going to pop a treat in your dog's mouth. Okay, so finally Splash has stopped thinking about the food right now, so I'm going to take one of my T-R-E-A-T's and present it to her face and I will capture the behavior of not thinking about the food. Another problem is if you're using counter conditioning, perhaps you have a dog that's scared of humans and you, you're clicking too much. The dog's looking at the person, click, treat, click, treat, click, treat. If you're clicking too much, the dog could start seeing the click as the predictor of the food and not a certain thing in the environment. Um, an example is Pavlov's bell. If the, dog's, if the dog is hearing the bell ring 
they're associating the food with the bell and not perhaps something that was in the corner, maybe a jug that the Pavlov owned or a certain thing inside of the room. The bell is really being reinforced with the treat and that can happen if you're clicking too much. Another way to make sure that you're pairing the trigger with the reinforcement that you're giving is to not click but as the dog looks at the object or the person or the other dog, you feed them directly to their mouth as their eyes are focused on the other dog. If, you lose your, if, you're, if you're moving and you lose the opportunity to feed the dog because the dog looks back at you, don't feed the dog because then you're just feeding the dog for a focus on the food again. So they see the person you feed, if they turn back to you, you can walk backwards, encourage them back and then try again from a different distance. Another problem you could have is if you're using the wrong reinforcement. If you have something that's not reinforcing to your dog, you can't create a different emotional response in your dog. For example, if you're trying to train your dog to love humans and you're feeding the dog kibble for seeing a human, if the dog has no reinforcement value in kibble, you're not going to get a reinforcement value in a human being. You want to use the best treats that you've ever used if you're trying to change your dog's behavior regarding fears, aggression, or reactivity. Another problem with counter conditioning that you may be having is that you can't find an area that is not too close to the stimulus where your dog will react. And a great thing to do is to get in your car, drive somewhere where your dog is successful and begin there before walking in your neighborhood or in the environment that your dog is having problems with. See you next time YouTube. As you can see, Splash is not thinking about the T-R-E-A-T's anymore so I can reinforce her for not thinking about the food. Tips. Work on training your dog to not be all about the food first before counter conditioning. No or little behavior modification will occur if your dog is focused on the food or distracted by it, apart from building your dog's food drive. If your dog regresses or has a setback, for example, suddenly barks and lunges at something, the best thing you can do is to take a break from training and resist the urge to suddenly address the issue. This is because stress hormones can stay in your dog's body up to seven days after a startle and can hinder your progress. Make sure the stimuli is the predictor of the food and not something else you are doing or that is in the environment. Make sure your reinforcement is of the highest value. Make it as easy as your dog needs. Counter conditioning will not work if your dog is too stressed or over aroused. Lower criteria if you are not succeeding. The goal is to avoid undesirable behavior and instead reinforce the absence of it. Stay tuned for more tips.